All right, so now that we have all four parts of the free prequel adventure Spelljammer Academy released, it's feeling a little phoned into me. I'm not super impressed. Based on what we saw just in the first part alone, I thought it was gonna grow into something a lot more exciting than it seemed to be. And don't get me wrong, I still think a creative DM can bring this to life and make this into something special. By the way, real quick, spoilers for this and a little bit for Light of Xerixis, the adventure that will be included in the Spelljammer box set. Okay, so quick story overview. You are cadets at the Spelljammer Academy. You're doing simulations and training somewhat through the first couple parts of this and it continues on. You go on to a mission to retrieve a meteorite after going through space. You retrieve that and come back and graduate from the academy. All the while, there's sort of this looming threat. People are messing with stuff at the academy and on these adventures, and you find out that there is a traitor. The traitor actually gets retrieved by the folks that he's working with that are trying to mess with the academy. Now there is foreshadowing to someone named Vokath who is going to be in light of Xerixis. And I do like that. This is this looming threat has the potential to make that a cooler character and encounter when we get to that adventure later on. So other than Vokath, I don't think there's a super strong connection to light of Xerixis. Now I haven't read the whole thing. It's not out yet at the time of this recording but I have seen the whole first chapter and read that and I have skimmed through it. And I do know that the way that you're gonna have to try and connect this adventure into that is just make the person that you run into in chapter one, the person whose ship you got assigned to. Otherwise, I don't know that it makes a lot of sense. As I was looking at those leaked materials, I was trying to skim for some of these characters that are in Spelljammer Academy to see if they come back at all. I didn't see anything in the artwork. I really think one of the strengths of this module is the NPCs. With really short blocks of text, I think they give you a good picture of who this character could be that sparks the imagination and brings a lot of charm that allows you to sort of take over as the DM. Officer Winston Ryback, Wiz Pop, the autonome survivor down here. These are both great ones that I really liked and there are several more. I think that's one of the best things that this does. And I think even if they're not in light of Xerixis, these are great characters to bring back or to try and work into that module. One of my complaints about this module is that it feels very low stakes, except for maybe the final chapter of it. Here's one example in chapter two where you're in a simulation for the second time. The first time in chapter one, it just ends after a number of rounds. And there's a few things in this that end after a number of rounds. This one, if a character is reduced to zero hit points, they don't even have to do death saving throws. They're just unconscious. And there are places where NPCs jump in to save you. I get that that's good for the Adventurers League where they're also gonna have this played, but eh. Structurally, this adventure is four parts that are each meant to be basically one two hour session and be done in four sessions. Each section is divided into three parts and that's actually a similar structure to what we're seeing in the table of contents and through the page throughs that are out there with Light of Xerixis. If you do this and then lead into that, you're looking at 16 sessions. But with Spelljammer Academy, you do a session at level one, now you're level two. Then you level up again to level three between sessions, and then again between sessions to level four. That's a lot of leveling up in a very short time. Yes, level one, you should get that over with and get that done in a session, but it should of course slow down incrementally after that. It's cool to level up, but you wanna make sure that it stays cool and exciting and just giving it automatically after two hours of play for every character seems a little fast where you're kind of removing that reward sense. You came, you played, you leveled up. So I'm not a huge fan of quite how fast that goes where they don't have to earn it. I'm not usually one to complain a lot about railroading. I think some of it is expected in a pre-written module because you have to define a point A and B and have some kind of way to get there. But this one was especially bad where there was just no options or even if the characters seemed to do something else, it basically acted as though they did. So that gives you even more work to do as a DM rather than giving you a couple of options or forking paths that might come back together to get you to the end point. Probably the worst example of this is in part three. Micken is this traitor and if you don't succeed on these checks, the one option to do it, then you may not find out the truth. As it's wrapping up the module, it says, well, what do they do with him? Assuming they know he's a traitor, they might not know. But then as you continue on to part four, when you're starting it and see the background, it just says an investigation revealed this cadet was a saboteur. What if they didn't find that? Now, obviously a DM that puts a thinking cap on can get around these things. There's ways to work it out if you go a little bit off book and sort of flex those creativity muscles. But still, I didn't love the way that that was presented. This premise has been done in a tabletop RPG before. Fantasy Flight Games, Age of Rebellion module, Onslaught on Arda 1, set in the Star Wars universe, does the same kind of thing. 
you're on a rebellion base, you notice suspicious activity, you notice the stakes are really high when something goes very wrong, and then you spend a bunch of time trying to sniff out what's going on, uncover a traitor, and then take care of them. This module isn't perfect. The system's not perfect. There are some flaws and some issues, I think, but I thought that this was a great experience when I played it with the group. And looking at this and looking at Spelljammer Academy, I would prefer to play this one. The upside, of course, is that this is set in D&D, this is set in Spelljammer, and it will, to some degree, although it doesn't seem like a huge degree from what I've seen in the leaks, lead into Light of Xerixis. And of course, Spelljammer Academy is free, and this book is not. Now, the fact that I didn't really like Spelljammer Academy doesn't necessarily make me less interested in Spelljammer overall, but it makes me a little bit less optimistic about what this box set is gonna be like. But we'll find out soon right here. Until then, keep rolling and have fun. Yeah,